But okay, I'm going to break this drawing down into steps that are way easier to follow than you might imagine, so that you can have a go, create this and amaze yourself. Okay, as I explained in the intro, I'm going to teach you about the painting process and techniques, as well as the tools within the app that I'm using Procreate. But that doesn't mean you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. Having said that, within the app Procreate, I'm using their default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. And in terms of the color profile, we're using the sRGB code, the one that ends in 2.1. And it's one of the ones that comes as default within Procreate. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to be using within airbrushing the soft brush and the medium hard brush. And within organic, I'm going to use the rainforest brush. And in terms of the colors, I've already pre-selected a color palette. Each of the colors, if you go to the value section, has what we call a hexadecimal code associated with it in this box. Down in the video description is a list of all of these color codes. You just need to copy them, paste them into this box one at a time, press enter, color will appear here in the top corner, and then you can tap it into the palette area and construct it yourself. Or next to the codes in the description is also a link that takes you to my Patreon page where you can download the color file for free. And Patreon is also the place where you can support this channel and gain access to exclusive content like extended versions of these tutorials. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people who are supporting me over at Patreon. It really does make a huge difference, so thank you so much. And with all of that said and done, we're going to get started. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the first colour on the top row, drag it from a little colour circle into the middle of the canvas and let go. And that flood fills the whole canvas and eliminates that white straight away. Now I'll just point out that sometimes the camera that I'm using will distort the colours slightly. I tried to adjust for this in editing, but sometimes there's a little discrepancy between what you see on your screen and what you might see on your iPad, which is why I do provide the color codes. If you want to see a really more accurate representation of what I've created, then you will see that at the very end of the tutorial. I'm going to go for the second color on the top row. I'm going to go for the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to put the brush size at 30% and 100% opacity, and I'm going to go just a little bit up from halfway and create a band across. I'm then going to go to the third colour, top row, reduce the size of that brush down to 20%, still 100% opacity, and this time go for the centre of the canvas. And you see we've just ended up with a little band of that orange still at the top. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, I'm going to blur that across to about the 50% and deselect. I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer, layer 2, back to my colours and I'm going to use the fourth colour on the top row. I'm going to go in with the medium hard brush. I'm going to put the brush size at about 4% and 100% opacity and then just below halfway I'm going to create a distant mountain range and it's going to have some subtle kind of peaks and troughs so just really just move it along Kind of wobble it a little bit, push it up and down, create some slight undulations, and I'm going to drag that colour from the colour circle into the bottom area to flood fill. I can also reduce the size of the brush down to 2%, keep it at 100% opacity, and then if I just want to go in and amend some of these distant mountain ranges just to make them a little bit more refined, then we can do that at this point. Keep them subtle though, we don't need to have too much variation in height. What tends to happen in distant mountains is that you don't get as much difference between the highs and the lows. So that will do for the distant area. Back to my layers and create a new layer, layer three. I'm going to move along to the fifth color. I'm going to stay with the medium hard brush and I'm going to put the brush size maybe to the 3% this time, 100% opacity. These mountains are just going to cut in front in some places, and maybe dip other places maybe just cut in front we're just creating some variation so we'll still see the distant mountains in some areas and again just drag from the color circle into that lower area to flood fill back to my layers create another layer layer four back to my colors and we're going to go for the sixth color stay with a three percent size brush and 100 percent opacity we're still using the same brush so that's the medium hard brush 
as in airbrushing. And this time we're going to do a mountain range that's a lot, lot closer to us. Something like this. And then we can drag down into that area. Again, flood fill. And we can go back to any of these layers and amend them. For example, layer three. I think there's a couple of peaks there that just compete a little bit that you can see. So all I need to do perhaps is go in with the eraser. Set the eraser to the airbrushing medium hard brush. Suitable size, again, maybe 2%, 100% opacity. Just remove some of it, but then I can also go in and add it. So remember which color we were using. We were using the fifth color. You can just go in and fine tune that layer as well. Likewise with layer four now, we can go back to the sixth color. And perhaps now we can turn the opacity down to about 40%. And we can do it with one sweep. Don't release the pressure on this movement. If you do it as one movement without bringing the pencil up and just move it across, you can create a kind of tone of mountain that just cuts in there. Again, I've not let go. This is all one movement. Now I can let go and let go of it. And when again, you can see it changes and creates a doubling up of that tone. But as long as you do it in one movement, you just get one flat tone. And then we could perhaps turn it down even further to maybe the 15%. A new area behind it and also the layer that you've already done. One movement, don't let go. You're just creating some subtleties there in the mix. There you go. We'll create a new layer, layer five. And we'll move along to the seventh color. It's pretty dark. Keep it at the same brush. So we're still on the medium hard brush with an airbrushing. We'll go to 3% size, maybe only about 30% opacity. And we'll just create some sweeps and some shapes in here. Again, I'm just doing it as one movement. Don't release the pressure on the Apple Pencil. Just do it as one continuous shape. And then you can just go and color it in. Again, haven't let go of the Apple Pencil off the screen yet. Just takes a little concentration to make sure it doesn't lift off the glass until you've finished. Then you can go in and add some more layers to this. Create another little layer there. Again, just one continuous movement. Don't release the pressure. Don't lift the Apple Pencil off the screen. Okay, I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer, layer six. And on this new layer, I'm going to use the Rainforest brush. Default settings, and then I'm going to go for the first color on the bottom row. If you've noticed, I've just added these colors, but don't worry. They are there in the description codes, and it's there already on the file you may have downloaded. So don't worry about that. So with the Rainforest brush, I'm going to put it to about 5% size, 100% opacity. And I'm just going to start scribbling it in at the top to about the halfway up here. And maybe from this side, I'll just blot it in. I want to keep some of the patchiness. I don't want to completely blot out all of the sky. And then down here, I'm just going to start tapping it in for this bottom edge. I want that to be more textured. Scribble, tap, combination of those techniques. And then as we get towards this center, I want it to break apart a little bit more. Be a little bit patchier. And it is pressure sensitive too, so if you press on hard, you get larger shapes compared to the smaller taps, and also it's darker or lighter. Blot in this area quite significantly as well. I'm going to turn the size of that brush down to 3%. Just refine some of these areas a little bit more. And then down to 2%. And then we're going to have maybe a bank of clouds that just juts in from this side. Now I'm doing this all in one color to begin with because then we can use the alpha lock and we can adjust and shift some of these colors around. Now the way that I'm thinking about the bottom of this cloud is it's going to be a little bit more distant so we can stretch it out a bit flatter on the bottom and a bit more undulating and kind of round shapes at the top part. And then it can fragment and break up a little bit more towards the center. Again, just some taps, breaks, clumps of cloud that just kind of all feather in here and join together and then stretch it out again. I'm going to turn the opacity down to about 50% and then 
and do something over here as well. Maybe turn that brush down even further, lowest part of 2%. Just add some more stretched out, smaller textures. Back up again, 3%, just merge them together a little bit. Why not? Okay, so the colors are not right, but that's okay, because we can go to that layer, tap on it, and put on the alpha lock, and you can tell it's activated because of a little checkerboard design on the background of that thumbnail. Probably go for some of these lighter colors to begin with, actually. So we'll go for the fourth color on the top row with the soft brush with an airbrushing, 8% size and really quite low, maybe about 20% opacity. Now I can just go over some of these lower areas. Definitely going to be a lot lighter than they appear currently. So just subdue them, lighten them up. As they get further down they're going to have to be lighter. The sun is going to be in this area so it's really going to bleach out so much of that darkness. It's a really important aspect of this image. Once you get a few streaks of that, mainly towards the lower area, perhaps we could go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, just blur it in a bit, maybe about 15%, deselect. Now we'll come to the sun now, so we'll create a new layer. We're going to change the blend mode, so where it has the little N, tap on it. The N stands for normal, but we're going to scroll down to add. And that changes the blend mode so that when we add something like a really light effect, if it has a colour, it's just going to preference the light part of that colour. So it doesn't add anything darker over a lighter area. So first of all, I'm going to add this third colour for the brightest part of the sun. Probably going to go in with the soft brush is fine. 8% size, 100% opacity, and I'm going to put the sun here. So I'm just going to tap it a few times until we get this kind of really fierce, intense light. Now if we want to ramp that up, we can go to the adjustments, bloom, and just slide it to 100% and it instantly gives it more of a glow. Back with the brush, we can put it up to maybe 15% size, lower on the opacity, maybe only 30%. A couple of times, maybe three times. Put the size up to 30%, still at the 30% opacity and do one tap. And we've really started to build in the glow. So I'm gonna create a new layer. I like to keep things a little bit separate just in case an element slightly goes wrong then if it's on a new layer it's not a problem so we're going to change the n from normal to add once more and we're going to start adding some sun beams so we're going to go in with the soft brush within airbrushing and we're going to use the fourth color on the middle row i'm going to put the brush size maybe at three percent and also the opacity at three percent it's really quite potent this so we don't want to have that opacity any higher so we're going to go from the center of the sun and I'm just going to start bringing some lines out towards the edge, a straight line from the center. And we can rotate the canvas as we do this. Press lightly, keep rotating, try to keep the lines as straight as possible. If you struggle with that, then you can always draw the line from the center outwards, hold it until it snaps, and then you're pretty much guaranteed a straight line. So draw from the center, hold it, and then it snaps to a straight line. Draw from the center, hold it, and it should snap. And we'll keep doing that all the way around. Maybe a combination of some freehand and some if you hold until it snaps. Just takes a few minutes to do this. It's an important part of the impact of this piece. So just take a little time to get these in place and we could treat those as guidelines in many ways and then if we wanted to start more freehand building these in maybe coloring between them a little bit joining them up so you have blocks of beams that all work together i tend to find it's useful to work from the middle outwards that way you end up putting more of the light towards the center then i'm going to go in and just add more of the in-betweens so it has a little less rigidity the lines are just a little less absolute. Keep rotating though. I 
Okay, I'm going to take that layer and slide and duplicate it. Then I'm going to go to the transform. And then from this little green circle, I'm going to rotate that layer. We need to make sure that the center is in the actual center of the sun. So just I've rotated it a little bit, doubles up the impact, take the top version, tap on it and merge down. So now it's on one layer again. I'm going to stay on that same layer. I'm going to go to the, I'm going to go back in again, 2% size, a little lower on the 2% and maybe a bit higher this time, 10% opacity. And I'm just going to build out some of the sun rays from the center of that sun, a little bit more strong. So we need stronger light near that center. Build some of these lighter ones into the sky. Again, I want more of the brightest light in that central area. And then it's obviously going to just fade off a little bit more as it goes higher up. So the nearer it is to the center of the sun, they're just going to be a little bit brighter and then fade out at the edge. Then I'm going to switch to the third color on the top row, this yellow color, same settings. And I'm just going to extend some of the light of the sun out a little bit into these beams. I'm not going to do too much of that just yet, but just outwards a little bit. Okay, we can always come back to these beams and ramp them up if we feel we need to. But now we've made a start on them, I think that it, it makes sense of more of the things we're going to do. I think they're a little bit fierce, so I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur that in slightly, maybe about 5%. I also think the outer edges, perhaps, of these beams need to be a little bit fainter. So we could easily do that. We can go to the selection, freehand, just around this point, maybe draw, close the loop, invert it. Now it's selected that outer area. And we'll go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur that in, maybe 5% again, deselect. And we could always do it again with a slightly larger loop. Invert, Adjustments, Gaussian Blur. Blur that in, maybe this time to 10%. Deselect everything. And it's just softening it more and more towards the outer edge. Okay, I'm gonna create a new layer. Again, change the N for normal blend mode to the Add. We're gonna go in with the soft brush with an airbrushing, and I'm gonna use the fourth color on the middle row, this orange. Low on the 2% size, maybe about 30% opacity and zoom in. And we're just gonna start moving in and around some of these cloud shapes. When they're near the sun, the sun is gonna catch the edge of these clouds, just really illuminate them. And really brighten them up. So any shapes that are in this particular area, we can just trace around the edge and really brighten them up. A really simple technique and it really lifts the effect. So we can extend this across our canvas. And the good thing about this is that if you add it here, it really ramps up what's there, whereas we add it in a different area and it just has a different quality, as you can see. So much more kind of a warm color over here, much more of a yellow over here. Perhaps I'll turn that down even lower into the 1%. We can add some other little textures in here as well for the clouds. We could alternate between the orange and maybe this third color, and that's just gonna be able to extend something much more dramatic, a real kind of white color into some of the clouds that are really close to the sun area. We don't wanna extend that very far though, just a little bit in that very localized kind of area. We probably need to turn the opacity down to about 15, anything that goes a little bit further away just so we're adding it more gradually for this more yellow color now your shapes are going to be a little bit different than mine obviously depends on how the the brush when you were tapping it was applying some of the textures don't worry if yours looks different that's absolutely normal i'm going to go back to the fourth color on the middle row clouds are something that you can return to Keep practicing, the more you do, the better you'll get. So don't worry too much. 
It is an important element of this scene, but it's only one of the elements. There's a few different factors that pull together in an image like this. Again, just bring this outwards. We've still got it at the 15%, which actually works quite nicely when we start to bring this out into the outer edges. Again, just tap in, dashes, feather this outwards, and it's bringing a nice sort of extra layer of textures luminosity into some of these even further areas again this orange is really good color because it ranges you add it in an area that's already bright with the blend mode to add then it it adds a really bright color but you add it into a darker area and it adds a more subdued color which is perfect it really does help in this type of a scene to use the add blend mode just extend that across the top edge and the bottom edge of this cloud up here just tapping it in, tracing in and around some of these shapes as well. It might cut in a little bit more up here, for example, maybe up here, some of these gaps. I'm going to put the brush size up a little bit, higher on the 2%, tap it in over here, and underneath of this side too. Perhaps we could go to maybe this red, first color on the middle row. And this is now going to bring in some more orange colors, be a slightly different impact. So I'm going to put that brush size up to 3%, down to 10% opacity. And maybe just in this bottom area, we can just bleach out some of that color. I mean, I suppose it's, an, it's a part of the impact of these sun rays. So maybe we could do it in that type of a gesture. So think about where between the sun rays perhaps we can just apply some of this color and then over here as well maybe even higher on the size four percent don't want that too distinct though so just soften that slightly same over here push some of these beams outwards a little bit and it's the real combinations of effects it's the beams we've already done but it's also direction of the brush strokes that we're adding now as well In addition to the beams that are pushing out, it's still going to catch the edges of some clouds further up here. So maybe you could just go in there with a lower percentage, maybe 5%. We can just have some textures up here in the clouds. So a kind of more sideways movement now, cutting across the beams a little bit. So there's nothing absolute about these textures. I'm gonna go back to the orange, lower on the 2% size, 10% opacity, and maybe there's just some edges up here as well. We can have some light impacting. Perhaps we could even go in with the yellow. Third color on the top row, something a little bit even brighter. Not too much of it up there though. Back to the orange. I do prefer the, the glow of the orange. I think it is really nice. There's just some bits here, maybe. They're a bit thin on the clouds, so they're letting some of the glow through. That's quite nice. Tap in some of this texture so it pushes a little bit further back. Lower on that 2%, maybe down to the 1. Back up again, 20% opacity. And then we can just really ramp up some of this glow here as well. Just being quite haphazard with this and not tracing now round in a neat line at all. I think sometimes the kind of rougher you are with the textures, then the nicer effect. Just taps and dashes. Nothing overly neat about this at all. Now, if you want to spend a longer time just really fine tuning and <laughs> agonizing over it a little bit more, then please feel free to do that. It's just not the way that we work during these tutorials. We're just using a slightly quicker approach. I'm just adding a slightly larger brush there, 2%. And then I'm turning it back down again to the 1% for the more refined areas nearer the sun. Now I'm going to go back to layer six that had the main shading and colors for the cloud. There's a bit here that I just think needs to be, there's a few areas of that darkness that need to be subdued. So I'm going to go in with the soft brush with an airbrushing on that layer. I'm going to go to the first color that we used on the top row. I'm going to have it at 3% size and only 10% opacity. And I think I just want to subdue it slightly. 
in areas, maybe a bigger brush actually, maybe go for it 5% size. We could just knock it back a little bit more. Maybe this one, just cool it down a little bit, especially as it goes off towards the edge. Have it be a little bit cooler. Brush size up even more, 10%. Cool it up here. I think I prefer that. Maybe go for the fifth color and just, yeah, blend it in a little bit better here as well. Across here. Happy with that. Now I'm going to go back to some of these mountain areas. Probably going to go to, first of all, layer two and tap on it, go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and it's a little bit sharp in that distance. So now with the Gaussian blur, I'm going to blur it not too much, maybe just about 2%, softens that edge. And we'll do the same for layer three. Adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just soften it, maybe that 2%. It's a subtle thing, but it, it does make a difference. Might also go to the layer two once more. And I think when it encroaches near the sun, it needs to be subdued. So I'm gonna go with the eraser, soft brush, 4% size, 20% opacity, and just remove it slightly when it gets nearer that sun. Just trace over it a few times on that edge. So it just bleaches it out, just softens it. Don't worry too much about over there, but certainly here, it shouldn't be so harsh. Okay, we'll go to layer three, put on the alpha lock. So anything we add now can only stay within the areas that we want. Perhaps we'll go in with the fourth color along on the top row. Still with the soft brush with an airbrushing, 2% size, 10% opacity. Now anything we add is just gonna change this a little bit. And we're just creating some textures very roughly. Just keep it from being too flat. Just add some variety of kind of ways that the light can catch it there a little bit. Doesn't need to be overly dramatic. We're just creating just some variety of tones so it's not quite so flat. Okay, I'm gonna to go to layer four, create a layer above that, so layer 10. And I'm going to tap on the N for blend mode normal and put it to add once more. Soft brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to go for the second color on the middle row. I'm going to put the brush size up to pretty big actually, up to 50%, 10% opacity. And well, I can just tap in this sun area and it's just bringing down some of that glow into the mountain range. It's not really affecting much up there. It's just kind of bringing it further down, which is perfect for what we're trying to achieve. Now, if it doesn't do it quite enough, we can always just circle it in a little bit broader, like that. That's a very bright scene. There's a lot of warmth to this. I'm gonna bring that brush size down now to the 1%, so the 10% opacity. And within some of these areas, we're gonna create some extra lines. There's gonna be, especially down here, just some undulations in the landscape. So just catch the light further. So in, otherwise, it was quite a flat area here. We're just adding some more lines across. Just helps bring out a little bit more, a sense of a description of what's going on. You don't need to overly work it. Just some sweeps and rises as we move across. Can actually go a long way to describe some of the shapes and areas here. And then as we come down into this area, we've got some closer to undulations now. <laughs> I've realized I'm using that word quite a lot, but it just really describes what we're looking at. And then just some further separations of some of these forms as well. Trace around that edge. And then also within the flatter areas, just create some more sweeps and textures. Maybe put the brush size up more into the 2%. Once you've got some of the larger shapes in there, go in with a smaller brush, so reduce it down to the 1% again, and then just refine any bits that just needs a, a little bit sharpening up, if necessary, obviously. You can spend as, as long as you like on some of these little textures and details. 
Okay, I'm gonna go back to layer four, tap on it and put on the alpha lock. And I'm gonna use the soft brush within airbrushing. I'm gonna use one or two of these dark colors. So I'm gonna go along to maybe the eighth color, put it to 10%, in fact, no, even bigger. Let's put it to 20% size, 10% opacity, so not too huge. I'm just gonna bring some of this cooler color in, in this bottom area, maybe some of it over here too. I think a little bit more contrast is, is perhaps needed. Then I'm gonna go along to the ninth color, turn it down 10%. Maybe this bottom area needs to be a little bit darker. Turn it down even more, 5%, just to be a bit more specific. Bring it upwards there a little bit. And then the 10th color, turn it down even more, 2%. Perhaps we'll put the strength up 30% or so. And again, just bring in some darker textures into this foreground area, perhaps. Not too much. Back up to layer 10, create a new layer above that, layer 11, and I'm gonna switch back to the bottom row. So I'm gonna go for the first color on the bottom row, 1% size with a soft brush, 15% opacity. I'm going to zoom in now and just within some of these areas, perhaps we've just got some features in here where the light is catching it in a slightly different way. So we've got some cooler colors. We've got all the warm colors where the sun is and maybe on the other areas of the sky. Bits we don't see. There's some cooler colors that just reflect on these shadow sides. So the secondary light is the more ambient light in the sky. We don't really see but it doesn't mean that it won't have an impact. You'll see the impact more in the shadow areas where the direct sun isn't quite hitting. So we can just add some of this secondary cooler highlight in here as well. That's gone a bit too far, so not too powerful with that. It needs to remain quite subtle. And then move along maybe to the the last color, the third color, slightly warmer hint as we start to transition from the shadow side to the warmer side. We'll try to move the direction this way a little bit so we get this kind of V shape. Then we can even move to the more vibrant colors. And now that's starting to look like more of a feature. More going on. Then we'll go back to, where are we? We'll go back to layer 10, back in with maybe the third color on the middle row. And we can go back in here now with the smaller brush, still at the 1%, 15% opacity. And just like we had texture here, of texture on this side, but now it's the, the warmer texture. Same kind of ridges, but they're catching the light in a different way. Bring some of these lines back here. Again, just add some ripples. Okay, I'm gonna bring some of the beams down there a little bit more. So let's go back up to where the beams were. We're on layer eight, still with the soft brush with an airbrushing. For the fourth color, the orange, 1% size, 15% opacity. Let's bring some of these down a little bit more potently now into the scene. 15% opacity rather is a little bit strong. Let's put that down to five. Do it a bit more gradually. Really want these to impact through this landscape now and just kind of be the main focal point really. Everything else is the kind of setting and really we want to see the impact of that sun. It is the literally the star of the show. Right, so I'll, I'll create a new layer for this. Change the blend mode from normal to add again. Then we're a bit freer to just push this a little bit further. So I'm gonna put it up to 2%. And if we go too far, we haven't ruined the layer. I'm just gonna add this on now. So it ramps up on top of what we've already got. 
Again, a bit more focal focus towards the actual sun itself. Rotate round, get some of these beams in even more potently. Race along them to the centre. As I said earlier, sometimes these colours are going to be a little bit off due to my camera. Hopefully not too much. Push size up again, 4%. Let's just bring them out a little bit more. Keep rotating, keep zooming out, checking the impact. It's possible I'm overdoing this, and that's fine. We do it on a separate layer just for that purpose, and then we can always subdue that whole layer if we need to. I quite like really going for the overdramatic sometimes. Sometimes subtlety is great, and sometimes you just want to really be over the top. And I think in this example, it's all about those sunbeams. I'm also going to change to the yellow and just brighten it up again towards that central area. Perhaps I'll turn it down again, 2% size. Just extend them out a little bit. We're only at the 5% opacity, so quite subtle. Now, as I said earlier, I'm aware that the, the camera is gonna really change the way that this looks, so don't worry too much if yours looks a little bit different. A few of these lighter beams just cutting through with this yellow. Okay, on that new layer, I'm going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur that in. Not too much, but maybe 3%, just to soften it slightly. Okay, I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point. It's been very difficult to capture this kind of light on camera. I hope you've enjoyed following along, nevertheless. Do remember to hit subscribe if you haven't done already, and I shall catch you back here for the next tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.